with curator Adrian Janta with the show Designing Intelligence, Intelligence question, mark. question Mark. And let's kind of push this back a little bit. I want to try to keep away from those lights a little bit. So Adrian, come on over here. So tell us a little bit about the exhibition. The exhibition is a collaborative curatorial mm -hmm between myself, Michael Zansky, and Dominic Lombardi. Michael Zansky and Dominic Lombardi had a traveling exhibition called The Intelligent Design Project. Mm -hmm. So we chose to take that, and then I was allowed to add my flavor to it, which became Designing Intelligence, question mark, The Intelligent Design Project continued. Oh, okay. So they, they, they themselves are in the exhibition, they chose a few of the artists that are in the exhibition, and I was able to bring my perspective to the exhibition and choose artists and bring them into it. Okay, so tell me what their concept was for the show. The concept for the show is the debate that's going on about intelligent design in the school systems. They are trying to teach and bring it into the school system at the time when they came up with the idea in Kansas, in the Kansas school system. They live in Kansas, so they They don't live in Kansas. They were there on an other exhi exhibition, and it was the hot topic when they were there. Yeah, yeah. So then they came back and they started discussing it with a group of artists, intelligent design, evolution, creationism, mm -hmm. and it's a hot topic in Florida too, mm -hmm. and in Pennsylvania. So, trying to see here, because some of these works are so large, so, Tell me about some of these up here. These were pieces that were in the original exhibition that were up here on uh, the wall? I believe that really none of these pieces were in the original exhibition. This is the first um, experience of this particular. They created a lot of works just for this exhibition. Oh, I see. Um, so it's a newer version of the exhibition. Okay. <laughs> for sure. Um, and a lot of the larger vinyl pieces are by Michael Zansky, and they're actual um, photographs that are then turned into vinyl, then he painted on top of them, and it's photographs of previous works that he has done. Mm -hmm. So he reworked the works that he had been, mm, okay. that he had previously. Um, and then of course, there's 12 artists in the exhibition, including Michael and Dominic. Okay. Um, <laughs> so tell me about this piece that's right here. Let's move our okay. camera over here. We can see this a little bit better. Try to roll around so we can get a little bit better view of it. <laughs> that's probably a good shot right there. So tell me about this piece here. This is a piece by local West Palm Beach artist Rick Newton. Um, and we have three local artists in this exhibition, mm -hmm. which we're really excited about. Um, and Rick Newton likes to work with segments. Um, and you'll see we have this piece by Rick, we have this piece over here by Rick, and that piece over there by Rick. And as you can see, he likes With the to, orange frame on it? Yes. Okay. He likes to work in with segments. And we had him here for an artist visit um, last week, too, so he got a chance to speak about his work. but. Um, He's really interested in um, how we affect the earth by what we're doing. And he's also obsessed with surveillance. Okay. <laughs> so um, he's worried about it, he's curious about it. It's things, themes that have played out in his childhood that were a really big deal that have carried on throughout his themes into adulthood as he's working through these fears that he had about surveillance. And he was his, from a military family? I don't know, he didn't say he was really from a military family, but at the time, you know, when he was growing up, television, he said, was a really um, big influence, and there was the big fear of, of being watched, 
you know, Big Brother and nuclear war. And well, I think it's more being watched now than <laughs> probably, how old is he? Um, I don't know how old he is. I never ask people how old they are. Well, I think we have more fear of being watched now than when anybody was a kid, <laughs> except for kids now. Especially when we have iVideo phones. <laughs> well, not that, you know, I mean, just all over the, all the traffic signs and, and you know, all over, oh, everywhere. I mean, there's video everywhere. You go in and out of stores, there's surveillance. And I was really curious about this piece when I came in here the other day. What is this piece here? This piece is by um, Andy Holton. He's an assistant professor at American University in Washington. People got their fingerprints all in there. Yes, <laughs> people cannot resist to uh, want to touch the piece, although we ask them not to touch it. <laughs> um, but this piece is Everyone Needs a Creation Myth, mm -hmm. which I absolutely love the title and play with the exhibition. And it's really great because every day at 3.30, the table rotates, the handle cranks, and a new mountain is created. So it's a process that is frustrating in a way because it takes such a long period of time to complete. So, but it's also exciting because every day you're wondering where the next mountain's going to be <laughs> and how high is it going to be. So the table doesn't necessarily turn at the same... Nope. He has it programmed and it turns in and a specific so, way and then... And so the powder that's in there is... Is in the sector. And so that turns and doesn't... The sifter cranks and then... But it doesn't have a certain amount, so everything is... It does. He has it um, computerized to the certain specific amount for each mountain that it makes. You'll mm -hmm. see, like, there's a, one, sometimes it'll make three mountains, sometimes it'll make one mountain, sometimes low, sometimes high, sometimes two. You just don't know what you're going to get. Oh, okay. That's interesting. But we know we're going to get a purple mountain. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then, uh, what other piece I was looking at? We were looking at this piece over here with the orange frame on it, which is the other one. Who was this again? This is Rick Noon. Okay. And um, is there anything else that you wanted to tell me about the show? Well, it's my first curatorial experience. Yes, so. I know that. <laughs> I'm going to step back a little bit so we can. Okay. And? And it's been very exciting, and I'm very fortunate that I've had the opportunity to do so. Um, it's definitely not a conventional setup for an exhibition, so. I'm and I was mentioning that I thought that it was for your first curatorial yes. effort, that I thought it was a rather large and extensive and complex yes and maybe as the first time not really knowing all the things that you might have to be involved with maybe it's not so bad but you know when you know how much stuff complexity there is you know then people kind of back off a little bit with that so i think it's definitely quite the experience and i'm ready to carry more yeah, that sounds good. Working on a few projects now. Yeah, I, I know you're. I know you're working on some things, so we'll have to keep in touch about that. Definitely. Thank All you right. for coming Thank and you. visit today. Thanks.